Bombay Surfers is celebrating its bicentenary from 29th January to 1st February at Pune. Aviation and Defence Universe is carrying out a special on this occasion and today we have Lieutenant General SS Hasanis, Deputy Chief of Army Staff, PNS on the screen. Sir, you are a very chattered carrier in the Indian Army, in Bombay Surface, in the Combat Engineers, in Paratroopers as a very good paratrooper and subsequently as a general cadre officer. Sir, how has been your journey? Please tell us about it. At the outset, I must say that I was lucky that I got to be a Bombay Sapper. The journey starts uh, when I was eight or nine years old and I was visiting our father in his unit where his officers would talk about my elder brother as a child, follow him on the footsteps of the father and for me to be an army engineer, a sapper. My mama, who commanded the first parade in the National Defense Academy, which was presided over by Pandit Nehruji, was a Bombay sapper. He was my primary motivator for joining the Bombay sappers. So when I joined the academy, in the IM. I worked hard towards being in the merit list so that I could get my choice. And when I wrote my choice, I only wrote Bombay Sappers, Bombay Sappers, and Bombay, Bombay Sappers. Uh, my DS questioned me on that, but I said I have no other choice. And I was lucky, ultimately, to have got the Bombay Sapper. In that, it was a dream to be a paratrooper. And as luck would have it, there was a vacancy available when we joined the group. And I was offered that vacancy, which I jumped at. So, after doing my probation, which, uh, as we all know and acknowledge, is very tough. I was accepted into the forum as a paratrooper. There also, I must say, uh, I did not take a drink, which is something which paratroopers are very famous for. Yes. The commander who uh, was supposed to give me the maroons had a glass on his table and also the maroon berry. So he said, I am told you not had a drink, but we in the paratroopers boast ourselves to be of uh, good when we drink. So either you take both or you get none. So when I said, uh, sir, I am sorry, I will not. So he took the drink aside and said, I acknowledge, I uh, appreciate your steadfastness. And then he gave me the news. So it's been a, it's been a journey full of uh, lots of uh, happiness and uh, satisfaction all through for the last uh, nearly 40 years. Living up to the maroons, has been one of the driving forces uh, in my life, not only in the professional part, but also otherwise. You asked me about uh, the junk car. It's a risk, it's a big risk. The very fact that you are offered the junk car indicates that you are doing pretty well within the core. And then to go out into the open where more often than not you are likely 
to have people who may not look at you as from amongst them is something that you have to be prepared for. However, like General Raman asked me to answer only one simple question. He said, when I asked him for advice whether I should join General Carter or not, he said, the only question you have to ask yourself is this, whether you want to give orders or to take orders. So, with that, uh, there was absolute clarity in mind. I always wanted to be with troops and as a military man, to be in command of troops is only possible if you are in the general guard. So I joined the general guard with my eyes open. I was lucky. There are many others who don't get as lucky in uh, being in the general guard and yet progressing in this, uh, to this level. So I uh, thank God that uh, he has uh, allowed me to rise up to this state status and uh, be there I am today. Sir, really you are lucky because you have stuck to your guns and achieved what you have achieved so far. And uh, the next question to you is, uh, what has been your most memorable tenure or is it that of your life? which flashes back now and then in your memories, narrate that. Uh, to single out any one tenure over these 40 years, I would like to believe would do injustice to uh, the many, rest. many other contenders. And like I said, one joined the army to be with troops to command. So to me, all my tenures in command have been one better than the other. But if I have to really pin it down, the command of the independent paraffin company, the full paraffin company, the best or the first command that I got as an independent command uh, would be somewhere at the top to the extent that when I finished command of the fire company, which I must say, I was lucky again to have had the second longest tenure, nearly three and a half years of being in command of that company. Anything after that was only a bonus. The intense uh, interaction with troops as a company commander, yet being an independent uh, command in the para environment was something that was uh, really very, very satisfying. The uh, preparations in terms of operational preparations or some of the things that we have to do initially uh, were some, uh, were some things which we remember will be remembered by me through my life. Of course, before I took over command of uh, the Parafield Company, I had commanded 23 field company in Bangalore and Division. While in command there, again, we had a wonderful experience of the Kumbh Mela, where Bangalore in Alava were tasked to make bridge across Yamuna. And I was given the overall task from the regiment side. So I commanded the regimental task force for that. A uh, very major storm broke out after we had completed the bridge. And uh, the bridge swung upstream. Yeah, because of the winds and the high storm conditions that existed that day. And it actually broke up with the Bailey pontoons sinking and creating havoc. Fortunately, the bridge was yet to be opened to public. The way in which the regiment 
and their task force. In fact, by, uh, to retrieve the situation, the entire regiment uh, came on the brick side. And over the next three days and nights, despite the cold, biting weather of Alaba, with continuous rains, we rebuilt the bridge. That was something which uh, will remain with me to my days. When I was lucky enough to get command of 108, uh, any commander would like to command troops in operations. And uh, I was lucky to take the regiment to Opera. The uh, way the regiment performed out there in the preparatory period of Opera, our corps commander, the strike corps commander, called uh, Saint Samuel and he told the regiment. Seeing your capabilities, I am earmarking the most difficult engineer task of my core to you all. Probably nothing better could have been said by any, any commander yes. to assume of an engineer regiment. I mean, that was one of the days I will remember through my life. The next command was that of the engineer brigade at uh, Zero. Of course, that was a very short command, six months only, but it had its uh, charm. We went out to CETC and I insisted that the entire equipment would be put to use, which I was told then had happened after many, many years. From there, I went on to command four sector R, or my first uh, general guard command. On the sixth day of my command there, my, uh, one of the units had an officer shooting himself in the play. In the morning, in the evening, when Jawan shot himself and the next day morning, I had one Jawan from the, uh, that same unit running away with three weapons. Nothing worse could happen to a sector commander and this was the sixth day. All hell broke loose and uh, it continued for a month and a half before we managed to get contact with the guy who had lured this Jawan away, utilized him and got back two of our weapons. After that first one and a half months of agony, Four sector RR was the best performing sector in the entire Northern Command for that uh, year. So that, uh, I'm sure, was one of the pinnacles of my command. Uh, Thereafter, I got, I was lucky to have got command of the 11th day, a division which has very terrain. Deserts, the run, the creeks, the coastline, and therefore uh, got exposed to not just the army, not just the terrains that the army moves in. Most of the army never gets exposed to, but to the Air Force, to the Navy, the Coast Guard, to the uh, BSF, all sorts of organizations. It was a very, very interesting tenure, uh, which uh, was very satisfying in the way we would uh, develop things out there. And then of course, so the last command tenure that one got as probably the first uh, time that uh, engineer officer was commanding a strike corps. That was the 17th corps, the mountain strike corps. That of course was uh, very satisfying in the sense, like I said, first time that an engineer officer was commanding a, a strike corps and uh, that too a very unique strike corps. Uh, we could, since it was still in its early stages of raising, one could contribute towards the uh, formulation of its doctrines, the way it should be employed and 
succeeded in, um, in the time that I had out there. That was, uh, I would say, in a nutshell, the uh, best tenures that I have had in my uh, career so far. I think very rightly you said, sir, that uh, uh, you know, checkered career, which is really a checkered one, as we rightly hear from you, there can't be one incident. And all these incidents have probably inspired you so much that you're still full of youth and vigor. And all these uh, memories bring you back that uh, enthusiasm in you. And we, uh, we now come to the last question. Uh, that is, uh, as you know, some Bombay Sappers are celebrating the bicentenary. And you are the senior most serving Bombay Sapper. And uh, therefore, uh, we would like that you should give a message for the youth the, of the Bombay Sappers which should be like a mantra for you and should form a beacon for them so that they can carve their career something like you and make a successful career. Uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, tell my uh, younger brethren that you can't get luckier than being a Bombay Sapper. To be a Bombay Sapper, you have to be proud of yourself, not just yourself. You have to ensure that your platoon, company, regiment and the Bombay Sappers are made proud by each and every action of yours. Never ever allow your personal requirements overshadow the necessity of looking after your troops, being better than your troops in every aspect. You must be an example in every aspect of life to your troops. It's, it's so, uh, so key a requirement which I feel needs to be emphasized day in and day out. It's your time, it's your world. Go out, enjoy. The Bombay Sappers are known for being happy go lucky, known for being those who deliver the most reliable in terms when it comes to the most difficult and most treacherous aspects of the army life. So be there and do your best at all times. God bless. I think this mantra will go a long way uh, for uh, making the career of our youth and someday we'll have another young Hasatnes in the Indian Army. Uh, sir, on behalf of uh, Bombay Cypress, the Aviation Defense Universe, thanks you for giving this interview and we wish that uh, on the bicentenary, on 30th January, you have happy paradoxy and safe paradoxy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thanks to your uh, initiative of uh, developing uh, this. Uh, here is Sangeeta Saxena, our editor from the Aviation Defense Universe, who also happens to be the wife of a Bombay sapper who commanded 112 Indian Regiment and who got, who earned a uh, unit citation of the chief in cargo operations. I must say here yeah, that we were neighbors, 108 yes. and 112. Yes, yeah. and both were neighbors in Cargill operation. And both got it. And both have. Uh, both got and it. third was 106. Yeah. And thank, I you. Have thank you so much, sir. Thank that you. was wonderful. Thank it you. was a great privilege for the Bombay Sappers and for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.